So when I say triangle symmetries, what does that even mean? That's what we're going to go over today. We're going to see a bunch of examples and see all of these different varieties available for us to choose from. First up, what triangle am I talking about? So the triangle I'm talking about with triangle symmetries is an equilateral triangle. That means all three sides are the same length and all three angles have the same measure. So when we're talking equilateral triangles, um, there's only one equilateral triangle, but in origami tessellations, I do distinguish between a right-handed twist, like this one here, and a left-handed twist, like this one here. And so the symmetries that these triangles allow us to use are threefold rotational symmetries. So that means each way I look in three directions looks exactly the same from the perspective of the center of this position. And from the center of this position, also threefold rotationally symmetric, and also the center of this position, the center of the loop of six triangles. So here we have an interesting thing. We're using these single triangle twists, but what it's generating when you build out a pattern of more triangles connected in these rotationally symmetric ways is three distinct positions of rotational symmetry. So we've got position one, position two, position three. And that's going to be common for a lot of these examples that we're working with, whether they use the mirror symmetry lines around the twist or not. So in these first two examples, we do use the mirror symmetry lines. Here you can see them drawn in blue on the paper, where we have both mirror symmetry and rotational symmetry. Now, the mirror symmetry isn't necessary to get the three positions of rotational symmetry. And our next example shows exactly that case. So I've got my three positions of rotational symmetry, one in twist A, the closed twist, one in twist B, an open twist on the back side, and one in the center of a loop of six twists. And this will be common across all, so this schema of twist, neighboring twist, center of loop of six will be common in all alternating selections of triangles, of which you've seen three of the four possibilities already. So the four possibilities are closed, closed, same side, open, open, same side, closed, open, different sides, or closed, open, same side. And so if all you know is this alternating selection, you're really limited in what you can fold with just triangle twists. You're down to four tessellations, but as you can see here, this stack is a lot larger than four tessellations. So let's dive into why that is. When you put more triangles together, so I've got these four triangles. Now these outer, these corner triangles, are not in and of themselves rotationally symmetric. And you might be saying, hold up a minute, I thought the twist itself was rotationally symmetric. And that is true, but there's a distinction between the rotational symmetry of the twist itself and the rotational symmetry of that position in the tessellation. So I'll let that sink in. There's a difference between the rotational symmetry of the twist itself this twist is exactly the same as, well, I'll go for exactly, exactly the same as this twist, and yet they're in different rotationally symmetric positions in the tessellation as a whole. In this tessellation, since I have clustered four twists together, the central twists of each cluster have 
rotational symmetry. And then there's also rotational symmetry in the center of particular loops of six, loops of six that go between six clusters. Not the loops of six that go between two clusters, only the loops of six that go between six clusters. So I have a variety of examples of this cluster four type of symmetry using equilateral triangles. So you can take that same cluster of four idea, and this time I'm putting them closer together, but what makes this different from the closed triangle pattern that we saw first is that I've got these open triangles in the center of my clusters of four. And I'm taking the same cluster and mirroring it back and forth around my tessellation. And here you can see really clearly that even though I have six closed triangles, this isn't six-fold rotationally symmetric, it's just threefold. Because when I look in these three directions, I see the same thing. When I look in these three directions, I see the same thing, but these three are different from these three. And so I can continue. I can say, okay, well, what if I take that same cluster, open center, closed corners, and flip it front and back on the two sides of the tessellation? So open center, closed corners. You can see on the other side, it's also open center, closed corners. I can do that too. I maintain the same symmetry. The center of the cluster has threefold rotational symmetry, and so does the center of a loop that goes between six clusters. Likewise, if I take this and I put the open center of the cluster on the opposite side from the closed corners, and then I alternate that same cluster front and back. Likewise, if I have a closed center and open corners, and I'm alternating that front and back, you can see this is starting to get combinatorially explosive, where I have many more options for what I'm doing than I had just with alternating one twist with another. And granted, even with alternating one twist with another, we can get more options if we start including more twists. So there's not just a closed triangle twist and an open triangle twist. This is a sliding scale. So the closed is the most closed, and then the open is one grid spacing further open, and you can keep opening it one grid spacing increment at a time. And if you're using a machine pre-creased piece, you can open it continuously by moving one pleat further out. So that's a really trippy thing about twists. It's not just the basic twist like I have in my basic twist series. There's infinite variety. However, you're going to get the most bang for your gritting buck by sticking with smaller twists. And that's why I typically stick to closed and open of each of the twist varieties. So continuing on, what if we do a slightly different take on things? So here, I don't have clusters of four. I actually have clusters of six. And so you can see I've got the alternation between the closed twist and the open twist around this loop of six. And I've got that same loop of six copied over here, over here, over here, over here. What makes this different from an alternating tessellation is that I've got extra space between these clusters. So inside of a cluster, my twists are corner to corner. So the corner of this open twist is exactly where the corner of the closed twist comes to. But when those two go to transition to the next clusters over, they have a gap of one spacing. And that changes the whole symmetry. So instead of any of these twists being in positions of threefold rotational symmetry, 
we have the center of the cluster as a symmetric position, threefold rotational symmetry. We have the center of this loop of six with the with more open space. And then we have the center of this loop of six with more closed space. So I've got three different positions of threefold rotational symmetry yet again, but in a different way, and none of them are centered in the twists. This is the power of triangle symmetries and recognizing that we need three positions of threefold rotational symmetry. So you can play with these different arrangements and say, okay, I've got threefold symmetry here, and I've got threefold symmetry here, therefore I need to form a triangle, an equilateral triangle, with my third position of threefold rotational symmetry. That's the power of what I'm talking about. There are other examples as well. What if we take these closed and open twists and we put them on alternating sides of the paper? And then we have these clusters of six and we move them further apart. Then there's other patterns that we can use. You don't just need to treat triangles as triangles. You can treat collections of other things as triangles. So in this case, I have a threefold rotational symmetry uh, position in the middle of my hexagon because it has three triangles connected to it and three hexagons. So this is really cool. I've basically taken this larger triangle, like we had the larger triangle for the clusters of four. And instead of putting four triangles in there, I put a hexagon and three triangles. I can also put three rhombi and three triangles. And sorry about the alarm, that happens sometimes here. And there's just all kinds of different ways that I can split up a triangle to make a collection of twists that I can then use in a variety of ways. So now that we've gone through the foundations of the theory, let's look at some diagrams. So when we're looking at the equilateral triangles, first I'll take you through that alternating symmetry that I talked about first. So the alternating symmetry has the threefold rotational positions in the centers of each twist. So there's blue positions in each red, each right-handed twist, yellow or gold positions in the center of each white or left-handed twist. And there's the gray threefold rotational symmetric positions in the center of our loops of six. And by the way, if you're not familiar with this diagram, check out my video on what a tiling is and why it matters, uh, where I explain like exactly what's going on here. So that's the alternating symmetry. Let's take a look at the cluster four symmetry. So I'll just bring up the rotations here, although there is a possibility for mirrors as well. So these clusters of four are defined by a central twist and then three neighboring twists. So you can see these central twists get their, each get their own position of threefold rotational symmetry and the loop of six where six of these clusters come together also gets a threefold rotationally symmetric position. So here we have two positions of rotational symmetry in twists and one outside, just like we had with the alternating symmetry. And then the cluster six, we, and I, here I outline the clusters so they're easier to see. We actually have our positions of rotational symmetry in the middle of loops of six, whether in the cluster or two different positions between clusters. And our clusters themselves 
repeat exactly the same. So that's cool. They're not rotating. They're not mirroring. They're just repeating exactly the same. It's pretty cool. And so that's what I wanted to talk about on the triangle tiling, the equilateral triangle tiling. Let's look at another one that you might not expect actually has triangle nature, <laughs> has triangle symmetries, which is the hexagonal tiling. Now the hexagonal tiling is a little different. You see, I don't just have right-handed and left-handed twists. I also have the green for fusion. And what that means um, is that the pleats coming into that block, into that tile, alternate whether they're coming from a right-handed or a left-handed twist. And so you have to do special things to diffuse that tension, uh, which I teach in my Tessellations by Tiles course. But that's way beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. The short version is each color of tile gets its own rotational symmetry. And we'll be going over some of these different patterns uh, when I talk some more about more examples, even more patterns. Like <laughs> the, the patterns I've shown you so far are the tip of the iceberg for what's possible with triangle symmetries. So these hexagonal patterns, they're really triangular under the hood in terms of their symmetries. You don't actually get six-fold rotational symmetries on the hexagonal pattern, which is kind of interesting. Um, and you can see that in the skeleton, which is a triangle grid. Um, interestingly, the skeleton of a triangle tiling is a hexagonal grid, but that's another Fun fact, but not so relevant for the discussion of triangle symmetries today. One thing you might not expect, though, is you can also apply triangle symmetries to tilings that usually are shown with hexagonal symmetries. So you can put triangle symmetries in this hexagons and triangle sixfold tiling. And you can do it multiple ways. So this way, I have some tessellations that use this way. And then I also have other tessellations that have the threefold rotational symmetries in the hexagon. So I end up with three different hexagons. One of the examples I'll show later is closed, open, and hybrid hexagons in the same piece. And in this one, I actually have two different positions that I can vary for the triangles. So I can have tessellations where I have two different triangle twists around the same hexagon. Just kind of mind blowing, to be honest. And most of this theory I figured out this year, like six months ago or so. And um, it's, really been a lifesaver for being able to design new tessellations that use simple building blocks, but use these symmetries in innovative ways. So I can design new things that aren't hard to fold. Now, let that sink in a minute. I don't have to, to design hard things to design new things. And that's fabulous because I don't want to spend all day pre-creasing. I really don't. I'll grid, but I don't want to pre-crease after the grid. And now that I know about these extended symmetries, I don't have to. I can fold straight from the grid as many patterns as I want, and I'm not limited <laughs> by anything, really. So that's hexagons and triangles sixfold. Let's continue on to some patterns that are secretly subdivisions of triangles. So we saw earlier this example of hexagons in positions of threefold rotational symmetry, like obligate positions of threefold rotational symmetry, where they're connecting to 
three triangles and three hexagons. And that has those positions of threefold rotational symmetry, those three positions like we've been seeing in the two different centers of hexagons and in the center of a loop of six triangles. So this triangle symmetry shows up well beyond where you might normally think to look for it. Continuing, we've got a subdivision of triangles into three rhombi and three triangles. And this works very much the same as that subdivision into a hexagon and three triangles that I was just showing you. Uh, actually, it has the same pleat patterns along the edges of our triangle, uh, our large triangle boundaries. And likewise, it's threefold rotationally symmetric inside the cluster and threefold rotationally symmetric between six clusters. And last but certainly not least, we can throw trapezoids into the mix. <laughs> this is a fun one. Um, I'm going to be teaching it to my Tessellations by Tile students soon. And here, we don't have rotational symmetry inside of the cluster, so this is more like the clusters of six in the equilateral triangles. We do have positions of threefold rotational symmetry at each corner of the cluster that forms that larger triangle. So just like those clusters of six. And it's just fabulous what you can do with these symmetries. And let's jump over to uh, more examples. And I'll show you what I've been able to figure out using these symmetries. So first, let me make sure that everything's going well. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to drop those in the chat. And now let's get to it, these examples. So here I've got triangles in cluster four symmetry. It's different on the back. And this one is called Siren's Call. Uh, I just posted a, a short video on it over on Instagram. And it has these crazy lines that go all the way through in backlighting. Um, it's a fusion between two of my other tessellations in the symmetry. So we've got emergent hexagons and stars and stars. And just taking one cluster from one and one cluster from the other, merging them together, you get Siren's Call. And what can I say? It's a beauty. A um, little bit of a pain to fold, but I go for grid efficiency instead of maximum easiness. So that's how I'm choosing how to fold my tessellations. You can also take these clusters and space them further apart. So this is what emergent hexagons would look like spaced further out. So you don't get the same backlighting effect, but it is still a fascinating tessellation. And this would be a great one to practice if you're looking to get a feel for these symmetries. Next up, I have a couple hexagon examples. Here you can see more clearly that there is a position of threefold rotational symmetry here in the center, in the middle of a loop of six hexagons, and there's also threefold rotational symmetry in each hexagon twist itself. Likewise, if I have these hexagons in a different arrangement where I've got two stacked triangle twists in between my open hexagons on the front, my closed hexagons on the back. You can see these are three distinct positions of threefold rotational symmetry, thus the triangle nature, the triangle symmetry of the tessellation as a whole. Continuing on, this tessellation is actually in the hexagons and triangles sixfold tiling. It just happens to use a hexagon uh, called a hybrid 
or sorry, not hybrid, isoaria closed hexagon that is only threefold rotationally symmetric. So the way you get this is you do a closed hexagon and then you take every other pleat and flip it to the other side. And that's not how you actually put in the folds, but that's the theory behind it. And so with this rosebud tessellation, I have three positions of threefold rotational symmetry and they form a triangle. I've got the center of the hexagon, the center of a tri closed triangle on the front, and the center of a closed triangle on the back. And if these buds, these isoaria hexagons were closed, it would look the same on both sides. So continuing, I have another tessellation that fits that same tight threefold symmetry on the hexagons and triangles sixfold tiling. Now this might look like it just has triangle twists, but that's because it's using hybrid, so threefold hybrid hexagons in the hexagon slot and then closed triangles on one side, closed triangles on the other. So it's really very much the same structure as Rosebud here. Threefold hexagon, closed triangle on one side, closed triangle on the other. But I used a different threefold triangle, or threefold hexagon rather, and that makes all the difference. Continuing on, this tessellation is an example of the broader symmetry that I was talking about, where I have a threefold hexagon, and then the next hexagons out are in threefold rotational positions. So this hexagon has three of these hybrid hexagons and three open hexagons next to it. And what this allows is, like I was saying earlier, two different triangles around the same hexagon. And so we get these around each of our open hexagons. You can see these are two distinct hexagon positions because in this one that open hexagon hole is fully intact. In this one it has some bites taken out of it by these open triangle twists. So our threefold rotationally symmetric positions are the center here, this open hexagon, and this other open hexagon. And these three positions form an equilateral triangle. That's another hallmark of the triangle symmetry. So here we have another tessellation, just, just like this, same symmetry type, where we have a threefold hexagon. So we've got the hybrid hexagon. And in this particular case, actually, the symmetry is extended even further. Uh, that was a misstep, misspeak earlier. I have a threefold rotationally symmetric position in the middle of a triangle, a threefold rotationally symmetric position in the middle of a hybrid hexagon, and a threefold rotationally posi symmetric position in another triangle. So I've got two triangles and a hexagon. And I chose this time to center my tessellation on one of the triangles instead of the hexagon. Um, sorry, the rotationally symmetric hexagon is actually out here. But next time I'm going to center it on the other triangle because it looks more hexagon-like around this triangle than it even does around this hexagon. And so there we've got these considerations when we're working with three different positions of the same rotational symmetry. Which one do you put in the center? <laughs> it's really an arbitrary personal choice. It's an artistic decision and you get to play with that as you develop your folding. So here's the one I was talking about earlier with the hybrid, the open, and the closed hexagon all in the same tessellation. So if I flip this over, we've got all of these different things. And like we were seeing with the pink one earlier, so this one's hazard disks, this one is hybrid hex weave, we have two different 
triangle twist. We've got an open and a closed triangle twist around the same hexagon. Around each of these hexagons, I'm alternating which triangle twist I'm using. And that's just mind blowing to me. So continuing to a different tiling, here I actually have the hexagons and triangles threefold tiling. So here we have our now familiar friend, the hybrid hexagon twist. And in three directions, it's going to a, um, to a open triangle twist on the back. And in the other three directions, it's kind of misleading, but it's going to a, another hybrid hexagon on the back side. So flipping this over, this tessellation is actually the same front and back, even though it uses all of these crazy twists. Slightly easier to spot the symmetries here, where we have these two patterns. I believe this is propeller and trillium. Um, and Dirk Eisner was also folding this recently, uh, which is super cool uh, to be coming up with the same kinds of things. And these two rely on mirror symmetries. So we do have uh, solidly outlined triangles that are then mirrored over and over. And then coming back to the hybrid hexagon in the same symmetry, we get a threefold position in the center of the hybrid hexagon, a threefold position in the center of the loop of six twists, and a distinct threefold position in the next hybrid hexagon over. So continuing, moving rapidly. Here, I do use hybrid hexagons, but I also have these closed hexagons. And I'm in, still in the same tiling, the hexagons and triangles threefold, where I actually have the center of my tessellation positioned in the middle of a loop of six closed triangle twists, so three on the front, three on the back. I've got another position of threefold rotational symmetry in the center of this closed hexagon. And then this position here is my third threefold rotationally symmetric position, and it's that hybrid hexagon twist on the back side. Continuing, I can do this symmetry with the same clusters front and back. So here I have um, closed twists on the opposite side from an open hexagon, and I'm just repeating that front and back everywhere. I can also do that in an even denser format, which it gets pretty challenging to fold because your pleats start really stacking up on each other towards the edge. But I was still able to fold both of these straight from the grid. Nothing I've shown you today was pre-creased before it was collapsed. Everything was folded straight from the grid. And that is really the easiest way to fold tessellations. So continuing onwards, here we're jumping to the next tiling where we have these clusters of six twists, three rhombi, three triangles that form a loop of six with a threefold rotational symmetry point in the center. And then we get our threefold rotational symmetry in the center of two clusters and the center of a larger loop between six clusters. And that pattern can be folded denser. It can be folded with the twists on alternating sides within these clusters of three rhombi and three triangles. And it can be folded with this arrangement even denser. There's just so many options that all look nice with tessellations. And it's kind of crazy what you can get out of a single sheet of paper. So last but not least, I've got one more tessellation here. And this is Dancing Pyramids. It's an example of the 
um, trapezoid and triangle combined to make an equilateral triangle that I was showing previously. So here I've got twists alternating on either side of the paper. I've got a closed triangle on the opposite side of this trapezoid twist, and then that cluster flips as I go around from cluster to cluster, getting my whole tessellation. And so here, like we saw in the tiling, my threefold rotational symmetry points are in the center of loops of six. I've got one in the center of a loop of six triangles. I've got another in, a cent in the center of a loop of six trapezoids. And I've got my third in the opposite loop of six trapezoids. So triangle symmetries can have remarkable variety. And there's so many different tilings that uh, can be used with these symmetries. And I was just touching today on the ones in my Tessellations by Tiles course. There are more. There are always more. <laughs> and I have an invitation for you. I invite you to look for these symmetries when you're looking at tessellations. And also, one more thing, look for what would disprove the symmetry. So one final example of an equilateral triangle tiling that does not use the triangle symmetry. So in this tessellation, I do not have rotational symmetry, even though each of my twists on their own would be rotationally symmetric. But because I'm using my mirror symmetry lines only in one direction, this tessellation actually has a linear symmetry instead of a triangular symmetry. So not everything that has a bunch of triangles is in the triangular symmetry, and things that include twists that are not triangles can be in triangular symmetry. And it's up to us to be able to look around and see if we can figure out which one is which. So with that, happy folding, y'all. I will see y'all next week with hexagon symmetries. And uh, that's another really fun one. And happy folding until then. All right. Madonna out.